good. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. The Newton Planning Board would like to hold a public meeting on Tuesday, September 24, 2024, at 7 p.m. at the Newton Town Hall. First, I would like to salute the flag. Recording in progress. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jim, we need to take care of that banner that's going across up there so we can He's see. He's got it. He's got it. You're, you're good. Okay. Thank you, Jane. Yep. So we have a full quorum in house. Mr. Gibbons is just going to hang out on the side today. Okay. Um, so the first order of business tonight is Jordan and Marissa, Marissa Piper request a public hearing for a retail home based business um, at 14 Heath Street, Newton, New Hampshire. The property is referenced as tax map 10, block 2, lot 37. Jen. Sure. Um, so. The Pipers have requested to do a business which would be qualified under a home-based business, which under the ordinance is intended to be an accessory use to the structure. The residential use remains the primary um, use of the property, so the use would be allowed if given the appropriate conditional use permit, if the conditions are met as a home-based business for the use purposes. Um, in reviewing the application, I have a couple of questions about it that are um, to help identify for you and just to clarify for um, any approvals potentially or disapproval, um, some recommendations. But beyond that, I do think the application is a complete application for consideration. So I would recommend that you invoke jurisdiction so that you can hear from the Pipers and also hear from the letters from for the public hearing component. So I will make a motion to accept jurisdiction. Second. Second. Ms. White? <laughs> Ms. White seconded it. Yeah, oh. seconded. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Ryan? Um, you actually don't need to do a roll call because you are all here and no one is participating on Zoom from the board. <laughs> That's the first time in five years. <laughs> um, wow. Okay, no roll call needed. You do need a call to question for the vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Mr. Piper. Backstory: This all is a vision that I had for working from home, um, getting away from chemicals, knowing where my food comes from, and being an asset for local food supply. And also feel that I am honoring God by honoring this vision. And there is a high demand for small-scale butchers. If you ask anybody who's got a deer in the last couple of days, they're struggling to find anybody. When they have a farm animal that they need to process into meat, they're traveling an hour to an hour and a half from Newton North or West. Uh, I am generally open up to questions for the board, and I know that the um, abutters in the audience can ask questions, but I just wanted to open this up if anybody had any questions for the board now or the circuit right here. Um, I have some basic questions. Um, so your application that you've submitted says that the Butchering and processing would be done in the accessory structure, that's the barn garage. Correct. Um, it also indicates a location outside of the barn where the animals that may be being processed before they are being processed would be kept. Correct. Um, can you describe sort of the nature of how that will work, how many customers, and then, you know, number of animals potentially, how waste will be dealt with, um, how the processed meat will then be transferred, I assume, back to the owner. Sure. So let's say um, we'll give two scenarios. So I'm looking to become a game butcher and I'm looking to become a uh, domestic farm. So cow, pig, you name it. Um, I'll give you two scenarios. One is that a deer has been harvested legally. I would take that deer and looking to hang it for about a week. Um, and I wouldn't see that customer again for another week.
characters just opt to process animals as they receive them instantly. I'm working the on of the animal and she's in a calm, sedate situation, so there's gonna be that opportunity the holding pen. The holding pen is we're talking hours, maybe a day, it's not like they're there for days, you you wouldn't hear them. Um, the idea is not to be stressed. Um, so the outside point is the gantry of which the first breakdown will take place and the remaining breakdown will be inside. And as far as waste, I am not allowed to compost anything except for my own animals. So per order of the Newton Planning Board, I also have a waste disposal plan. So there'll be a dumpster on site um, for any parts that I can't use. Does that cover all the questions? Um, I've got a couple sub questions if it's okay with the board. Um, so, once the animal is no longer in the pen, I'm going to go more with animals that are being brought that have not already been um, dealt with. Will all processing, butchering, slaughtering be occurring inside? We'll call it one fourth outside, the other three fourths inside. Can you elaborate on that? So that means that animal bones becoming meat, the first process, trying to get done to the first process would have to occur outside. Okay. Would any part of that processing be in view of any other property? No. Um, and as far as waste disposal, so a dumpster, how often would that be serviced? Uh, keeping up with health code. And what size dumpster? Uh, probably a half ton. How many yards is that? Uh, it's approximately a half ton, quarter ton. I'm thinking the one that um, yeah, that did get picked up by a front loader. So you said, one second. So you said three or four animals is that per week? Or I'll just at a time, all the time. I'll call that two weeks because there's a lot of prep work, and if it's if it's something like a cow, it's gonna be sitting in the cooler for two weeks, maybe longer, depending on what customer wants. I I don't think I'll be creating volume that would justify a dumpster pickup every three days or even you know five a week. I I just don't see that at this point. But the long as the longer it sits here, would that be an issue? as far as, you know, flies and smell and stuff? It could be an issue, but I don't want that. I have my own flies and my own animals I'm trying to mitigate. I don't want to add to the problem. And now the first 25%, you said that gets done outside. Is that, is any of that part of the process mean that like fluids go into the ground and stuff gets like dumped on the ground and permeate? So nothing gets dumped Okay. Which I discussed um, with Ms. Rowden, and I have found the capacity that is compliant with New Hampshire Ag. Um, I do want to just for everyone, there are several state laws and federal laws that deal with the type of business Mr. Piper is presenting um, that deal with slaughter, processing, inspection. So there is a whole component to that, if we get to any sort of an approval, that should certainly be a condition. It would fall under your normal, you have to get all federal, state, and local permits, um, but adhering to those state regulations and federal regulations would be have to be part of any um, approval. Um, I had one other question, and that would be, when the slaughtering is needing to take place outside, what would the type of noise to be expected? I know it's a little bit de detailed in your application, but. Um, for most things, it's gonna need a, a single gunshot. Um, Dennis, would it be helpful if I, in summary, went through the criteria I was of what a home-based business is, yes. just for everyone? Please. Sure. So this is under section 12, home occupation and home-based business. Um, 
One home occupation may be permitted in each residential unit um, in residential A and B zones of which um, this property is located. A home-based business is accessory to the residential use. There shall be no outdoor activity or use, including storage and parking of commercial vehicles or trailers exceeding 26,000 GV gross vehicle weight. Um, Home-based business shall not be that that requires regular or frequent services by heavy commercial trucks. The home-based business shall be registered by a conditional use permit, which is what the Pipers are here applying for, through filing to the Newton home-based business form. And then these are the general requirements. The exterior of the building must not create or display any evidence of the home occupation, home-based business, except a permanent sign for the home-based business, a maximum of two square feet. No toxic, explosive, flammable, combustible, corrosive, radioactive or other restricted materials that are improperly used or stored on site. No more than two commercial vehicles may be kept overnight on the premises. Adequate off-street parking must be provided. The home-based business must be conducted by a resident of the premises. There shall be no outside operations, storage, or display of materials or goods. No process shall be utilized which is hazardous to public health, welfare, or safety. The home occupation must not offend and by emitting smoke, dust, odor, noise, gas, fumes, light, or refuse matter. And the home occupation shall not involve overnight parking of commercial vehicles. So those are the criteria. I in summary, I do think, is this impacting the character of the neighborhood? If so, what are, the what are the conditions under which it would be allowed or would not be allowed? But all of those conditions that I just read would need to be met in order for you to be able to grant a conditional use permit. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody from the... Go ahead. Who's going first? <laughs> Andrew. I mean, I, based on some of the things that, that you just said, I mean, I, I guess one of my questions would be what sort of chemicals would be stored, if any, on site? Part of my business is to be as economically less har least harsh as possible. So the, thing, the hardest thing I plan on using is bleach. I'm going to be using bleach, white vinegar, that's the top corrosiveness, I guess you would say. Okay. The occasional degreaser. So there's also, looking at the map there, is it fair to say, or I guess in your estimate, how close is the baseball field on green to that outside tent? The baseball field? Or, mean or the whatever town the, line. the the corner of Greeny on the road there, closest to your property. So you mean like the the fence, like where they play baseball? Is that what you mean? Yep. Two three hundred feet. Is that accurate? Yards. Um. I will note that I am fifty feet from the town line, where Greeny Park is. I'm just trying to make sure I'm, I'm answering your question correctly. I'm, just, I'm trying to imagine where that is. So you have Heath Street. You are bordering Greeny Park, correct? I am, yep. Okay. Trying to see what the scale here is. Um, this is the aerial. Just, Jordan, this, this is your house, correct? Yes. Okay, right, the baseball field there. And the barn structure is north to the left, yeah. that white structure. Okay. Thank you. Barbara, did you have any questions? Yeah, I did. Um, okay. Um, one of the stip one of the stipulations for home based business is the fact that nothing's outside. And so you're talking about the animals would be in the pen until they're ready. So that seems to me that that's like a no no 
according to the rules. Also, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned with, I don't think you're supposed to shoot any guns off in the vicinity of houses because I, even though I realize that you're going to put it in a sp certain space and not you know, go up in the air, I just, I have, I have a, con a big concern about that. And I actually, I understand what you're trying to do and I understand the concept of it. But it, in my mind when I'm reading uh, RSA 2134, which reverse to 2134A, that I don't think that that falls within farming because you had said look no. at look at the farming. Yeah. I don't feel like that. What is that RSA? Sorry, the RSA is in reference to is it discharge of firearms or agriculture? No, sorry. no, it's um, the. He had asked in his application if the board would consider. RSA 2134A, I which is I believe it's 432. Okay, well, 32. Um, um, so, well, yeah. this is agriculture to a degree because it's processing of livestock. This use is not considered agriculture under what Mr. Piper is applying for. He is applying for a home-based business use. It is not I agriculture. Okay. By, just by definition, That's it fine. has some agricultural ties, okay. but it doesn't fall under the state agricultural. Right. Well, I have concerns about how he would retrofit that barn to, to work how he wants to make it work. And I just personally, I don't feel, I, like I said, I understand what you want to do, but mm -hmm. I don't feel that this meets my definition of a home-based business. I think it's more a commercial business. Where does it fall in relation to discharging a firearm within 300 feet of a dwelling? In all honesty, that is a excellent question for your police department. Um, I, I suspect there might be some. You're not supposed to discharge a firearm within 100 yards of a neighboring house. Yeah. Thank you. So while that would certainly still be an applicable rule potentially, there, I'm just saying there could potentially be exceptions that I am unaware of. It would be an excellent question for the police chief and certainly could be a condition of approval that that be sorted out. Um, but they are here for a conditional use permit as a home-based business. That is the application. That is the criteria you are to weigh against in this case. Conditions, mitigation, concerns about you know proximity to Greeny Park potentially, hours of operation, outside utilization of anything. Those are under your purview. But I, unless the board has more questions, and if you do, please ask them. You m might want to open up the public hearing. Yeah, I'd like to hear from uh, everybody. May I make one more point before I stay down? Sure. Uh, I just wanted to. I was under the impression that um, as far as using firearms, there is a clause that says with permission of the owner, as long as there's a written permission, and as I am the owner, I give myself the permission to do it. However, that is listed, that is listed for 300 yards, so I don't know where the 100 comes from, but that might be just a different RSA. There is state law that says you can't discharge a firearm within 300 feet of another property line, but there are clauses to that to which I can't elaborate because I honestly wasn't looking into that for this particular use. Any more questions? What, now, what about uh, the part of the business that will be located outside? As I said, you guys have to pit this against the criteria of the home-based business application. Is the animals being held outside, is that considered part of the operation of the business? Is the slaughtering outside considered part of the operation of the business? That is for you to make a determination on. Do you have any additional comments in respect to what Ms. Radden just mentioned? Or uh, It's my opinion that, well, no, let's hear from the public. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
questions. So if there's any members of the public that would like to come up and speak, you need to go to the microphone, you need to announce yourself. Um, I think he's got, yeah. You'll be second. <laughs> we'll, we'll push him out of the way. Good evening, everybody. My name's Dr. James Summers. I'm current, the current state representative um, for this district, and I live on at 41 Heath Street. I'm calling more, I'm actually coming here more of a, to, I guess, represent some of the state law that's involved in this, within, where I'd be not only concerned, but where many of the constituents are concerned here in the uh, town as well, and violations of uh, possible um, state laws with this. Uh, while the RSA meets that you could actually um, slaughter single animals as long as you're returning it to the person that you're selling it to, the person that brought the animal to you, as long as you're slaughtering it for them and giving it to them, that is legal under common, it's called common slaughtering, I believe it is. Custom slaughtering. Custom, custom slaughtering, excuse me. However, where we get in the RSAs or where, where state law kind of eats into this is where we get into basically right off the bat is blood. So you have, so blood is considered by the state of New Hampshire is called biohazard. Biohazard has to be remedied by a certain um, impact, right? Certain impact, certain inspe inspection has to have to have a environmental impact of where, it how, I mean, how much is gonna impact it? How much of the ground is going to be absorbed by it? How much of the soil is being affected by this biohazard? With Newton becoming, being all public water, public sewer, okay, our public water from Heath Street, I believe all the homes are all public water here in town, all right? How much effect does the blood have on the ground? And how much of a biohazard this is? And what's the, not only the town, but also the state requirements to be able, and I'm, I'm asking this because for the environmental and agriculture committee up in the state so they would i'm sure they would have to look at this as well how much did, how much this by hazard this would be for not only the neighborly impact but also the impact for the town groundwater and such and i believe there it does have to be an environmental impact study have to be done thirdly we also had a situation which legal precedent and the, the lawyer can actually correct me if i'm wrong about sweet hill farm which is right here in plastow of a separation between commercial and agriculture where they were trying to get expand their commercial business but they could not get the taxation of a of a agricultural so a split had to be done between what's considered agricultural and what's considered uh, commercial i believe that went up to the state as well and i believe if i'm not mistaken i don't know if it's got to the supreme court yet but i know it was going that way i'm sure some people have heard about sweet hill farm uh, let's see what else. Um, as far as the waste, there is the biggest concern, the waste, when especially myself, um, being originally from Kansas, living in Texas, and actually working in a slaughterhouse, I do know that, for, especially from cattle, you have awful, you have what's called awful, O-F-F-A-L, and you have disease control, which is actually from the stomach. This is where the parasites and the bacteria that actually comes from is from the intestines and that. Now, there's folks can actually harvest and slaughter these intestines and these par parts of it, cheek meat, meat, they can create bone meal from the bones, the hides, what they're gonna do with them. Also, if you're gonna keep the hides, if you're gonna tan the hides, there's many chemicals that go into that. We could go into tanneries in which the lawsuits from Nashua and Manchester have both been brought up to the state for tanning hide. I don't know if the hides are gonna be tanned there, I don't know how they're gonna be treated. I don't know if they're even gonna be cared for. That's, that's another question I have for there for the state. Um, I think that's about it for now. That's many, many questions and concerns, state laws and legislation that would be involved in this. So that's what I have. So I, I guess my understanding is this is a proposal for a home-based business for slaughtering a tannery. Um, and just for clarification, the planning board cannot speculate of potential code infractions so we can make them conditions but we can we, we don't in our purview do can't assume that they're going to commit or break a law. So I understand your concerns, but we cannot deny or assume that a applicant and this happens to be what we're discussing right now 
is going to have a potential problem and to deny an application because something could happen. In that case, the biohazard of the blood then, the environmental impact, environmental impact statement from the state, would it not be required for this first before any type of this business would be to exist? Can you answer that question? And there was, there was a discussion about the waste, and the waste was kept in a trash can. We know how hospitals act. How is the waste of a biohazard, which blood is considered a biohazard, how is that being disposed of? In the application for Mr. Pepper's donation, he was intending to use a dumpster on the waste. Which became empty. So liquid would be in a steel dumpster. A liquid biohazard would be in a steel container, correct? I think it would be better to let Jordan actually. If, yeah, if the applicant can, I'm not sure if it's better to answer that question now. I, I, I understand your question. Um, or if we want to get a couple more people up, I, I don't know what the best way is. I think either way, if it can be the answer Someone now. tells me that's going to be a recurring issue. So I would ask Mr. So Piper to. Summarize like waste management, handling, handling of biohazards. You would like additional detail and clarification on that. That's correct. Okay. If hospitals have to do it a certain way, I'm sure blood has to be treated the same. And I'm sure, I'm, I know for a fact there's an RSA on this, on the environment. I'd have to find out what it is. But there's the treatment of blood versus regular waste. My guess is that there's different requirements for human waste and agricultural or, or commercial waste. But I'm not an expert on biohazard waste. Or my guess is that a hospital management of hospital bio waste is probably different than animal byproducts from a biohazard standpoint. I'm not I, saying I, it's not the same. I believe, and my assumption is this, work, having worked in the commercial rubbish business, that biohazard waste has to go to an incinerator to be burned and not put in a landfill. And that's how it is taken care of. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mayor. Uh, my name's Meredith O'Connell. I live at 12 Heath Street next door. Um, I have a few questions, but first I wanted to just bring up a couple things that we've already talked about and kind of touch on those for a moment. Um, I received the letter of the hearing on Wednesday, so I've spent the time since Wednesday doing a little bit of my own research and as much as I could. Um, so Jordan had mentioned that bringing the animals um, coming in, they'll be in a calm, sedate environment. Um, in my experience, I deal with horses every day, and it's unlikely livestock, you know, horses and cows are different, but it's unlikely livestock can be brought to a new location and be calm. Um, and also with gunshots, I live very close by. I'm very concerned about that. I have a nine-year-old daughter, I have a dog. I don't really want to be worrying about that in my yard, getting potentially shot. Um, I can see the shop and the um, see that from my yard. So if the animals are hanging there for two weeks, I'm gonna see them all hanging there for two weeks and explain to my kid why they're hanging there. That's a, that's a me problem. Um, as far as the dumpster, I rent a dumpster for horse manure, um, a large one. It gets taken out weekly. I can tell you with extreme confidence, they leak. They leak a lot. So. If all of this stuff is being put in a dumpster and sitting for two weeks, I can guarantee it's leaking out of the dumpster and into the ground, let alone the smell. I can smell a dead mouse in my shed. I will certainly smell rotting carcasses in two weeks in a hot, smelly dumpster. Um, Greeny Park, um, I measured 65 yards from the shop to 
it's pretty close. So 65 yards of uh, space there. Um, so that's kind of the stuff we've touched on already. I have my own list. It's a little lengthy, so I'll try to go through it. What do we anticipate the odor to be for this? I live very, very close. Um, there is already odors in town from other farm animals, from turkeys and pigs and whatever, and I'm okay with that, but it's gonna be a different kind of odor. Um, those hot summer days, what is that odor gonna be? Um, also, I kind of guess we kind of touched on what exactly are we using for drainage? I assume everything's going in a tub and getting taken away how often or getting poured into the dumpster. Um, that's a big question. Where is all that going? Um, uh, the gantry and the drain is visible from basically my kitchen window when there are leaves on the trees. I can see all that. Uh, and from all parts of my yard. Um, there for sure also, I can imagine, will be an increase in flies and insects, um, which is a nuisance. We try really hard to get rid of those, and I know that comes with animals. I'm well aware of that. Um, but then that increases the risk also of disease transfer from whatever animals are being shipped in to our pets that we have on the street. And will that dumpster, are you gonna be able to smell it from Greeny Park? Are we gonna smell it there? Um, are we gonna be able to see the gantry from there once all the leaves drop? Uh, another concern for me, because I know livestock, horses at least, I know that's different. Um, but if they want to get away from you, they do. Whether you hold on to them, put up a fence, whatever you do, if they want to leave, they leave. So what happens if these animals that come in and are in the middle of the slaughter process or getting off the trailer and they leave and they're running into my yard or the park or down the street? That's a concern. Animals aren't smart. Um, Will it be regulated? Is somebody gonna come and make sure all, uh, all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed? So that, um, obviously from a personal standpoint, I live very close. I don't really wanna listen to um, gunshots and distressed animal noises. Bone saws, I assume there's going to be some sort of bone saw. Um, that's going to be heard around. The driveway is kind of a blind driveway if you're coming from Greeny Park. And I know the traffic won't be uh, a lot, but if you have, and again, I'm familiar with the trucks that pick up and empty dumpsters. They are big. They have a big hydraulic on them. Um, truck and trailers to drop these animals off are big. Um, is that going to cause any accidents coming around that blind turn and up and down the hill there? I have personally backed in trailers on that road and uh, it's, a, it's a little difficult. People go really fast there. And essentially, it's just, you know, again, a personal thing. It's just going to be um, stress for us. And I know that's a personal thing, but we've lived here for 22 years because it's nice and quiet. All right, so I think that's it. Going through my notes here. And I'm, I'm That's basically the summary of my concerns.
and I'm just going to try to summarize your comments in it. Sure. S Dr. Sumner, did I get that? Okay. I'm trying to keep a running list. Um, so generally, and correct me if I'm wrong, sure. um, waste management, odor, uh, visibility, vehicle trucking access, um, and then without skipping over it, is like checks and balances that will be regulated. Um, the personal concerns, although I understand them, we really don't have from a No, I, I know that, but this is my yeah. place to voice that. I, I understand <laughs> that. I'm not, I'm not trying to yeah. like cut you off or nope. have those unwarranted. Oh, I do have an uh, go on. Sure, no, no, I, I think that was it, and I was very quickly summarizing odor and yep. waste management concerns. Um, another one um, is with potentially these animals hanging for two weeks and the dumpster being taken out every two weeks. Um, my other concern is other wildlife that's going to be attracted into the area. So if 14 Heath Street is completely fenced in, and the wildlife is attracted to that area because of the offloading smells, where are they going to go? They're going to go into the abutters yard. They're going to go in the park. So now we're gonna have a whole other issue of attracting wildlife, more wildlife into the area. I'm well aware there's a lot of wildlife around, um, but that just opens us up to other, other problems. So environment control, and I forgot one. Um, Offloading slash containment of animals. Well, that's a, that's yeah. a big thing. Um, livestock, they don't think um, rationally. So if they panic and they want to leave, they're leaving. Um, there was one thing with uh, the unused parts and the blood and the intestines and all that stuff. Um, and I think he may have said it, but um, maybe a, s not that I'm promoting this, but maybe a safer way for everybody in the interim would have been to freeze it instead of it sitting in a mellow dumpster seeping into the ground. Do you have anything? I'm just glancing through here. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, and I think somebody else touched on this. Will it affect our wells and septic systems? Um, where it's not just the slaughtering, it's also the cleaning up after, that's also seeping into the ground. So, you know, if, if all the blood and whatever is going into some sort of tank, where is the water going? Uh, when the meat is rinsed, the cleaning of the slaughterhouse and the cleaning of the gantry, um, and that's even included in the holding pens for the animals. Um, that water, where is that going? Is that just going in the ground? Also, um, is there any impact on our property values? It's something the planning board can't even consider. Well, that's No, I totally understand it. Huh? We can consider the. Um, you can consider the impact to the character yeah. of the neighborhood. But we specifically could not. As it is one of the most seven crops seen in Hurst in years. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out. <laughs> Time. You're welcome to come back up. 
I was sure. going to cut you off. No, no. It's wow. Fine. Sorry. Okay. Um, anyway. I have to take up all the time. <laughs> Just to see if there's somebody else that would like to speak. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. And I will get to the people on Zoom at some point. across the street from the Pipers. I live there with my wife, Stephanie, and my small child, two, two years old of um, Samantha. Um, honestly, you know, we didn't get the certified letter, so we were kind of blindsided by this on Thursday. Um, little surprise that we didn't have a little bit more time to kind of find out more about this, uh, perhaps from our neighbor, um, from the planning board. I did go down and speak to Mr. Uh, Blodgett, I believe his name is, on Friday try to get some information. Um, you know, I, I echo a lot of my neighbor's concerns. Um, you know, I was hoping to come here tonight and hear a, a better plan, a more defined plan of how we're going to dispose of things, how they're not going to, you know, be sitting for as long as they apparently are going to be. Um, you know, I have a lot of concerns with the, the odor that's going to be transferred through the neighborhood. Um, I'm directly across the street and the shop is maybe 100 feet from the road, maybe less, 50 feet from Greeny Park. The area in question, which I looked at on the map that they uh, supplied to, with the application, the shop and specifically the gantry and the drain area was of big concern to me because I can see that from my house, my property, as well as when you're walking up and down the street. Now we have tons of kids, uh, retired folks up the street that walk up and down the street for exercise. This is clearly visible to them. I can see it from every window in my house. I can see it from every inch of my property pretty much. Um, I'm worried about you know attracting more predators to the area. I walk around my farm every day with my two-year-old. Uh, we have animals as well and you know we you know, we have flies just like everybody else and we've dealt with them and tried to manage them as best as possible. Um, for me, this is a concern. This is going to be, um, I'm hoping it's not going to change the neighborhood um, and, and the nice feel that it had when we moved here three years ago to start a family. Um, but I do have a lot of fear that if it does get approved and it does go forward, that a lot of our concerns are going to be realized. Um, so, you know, I did do a little bit of research. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, I was sick over the weekend, so I didn't get a whole lot done. But, you know, what I did see um, during my research was a lot of not so nice things about these type of businesses. Now, while I respect what they're trying to do and I, 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 I understand what they're trying to do, uh, perhaps this is not the best place to do it. In a residential area where you're 50 feet from a children's park, a uh, hundred feet from the road and and you know I didn't even think of how they were going to dispatch the animal I thought it was going to be some sort of a pneumatic thing but now it's a gunshot so now you know my property is very close um, the kids playing in Greeny Park are you know very close that's within 50 feet so I do have some concerns about that as well um, you know I, I don't begrudge anybody doing anything with their property um, as long as it doesn't impact your neighbors and the community. This has the potential, I think, to impact the neighborhood greatly. Um, you know, little kids walking up and down the street, they're going to be seeing this, this carcass hanging for two weeks, I guess it is. Um, I was kind of hoping that everything was going to be done, maybe if it was going to be done outside at all, maybe it would be done quickly and then transported into the shop and all done where no one can see it. Controlled environment, um, spill prevention, collection. Um, you know, when I spoke to Mr. Blodgett and tried to get some information uh, on Friday, he said something about a special viscera tank being used where the entrails would be, you know, put into this and then some sort of a chemical would be digesting these things. And so, you know, obviously I wanted to know a little bit more about that, but it doesn't seem to be like we're talking about a viscera tank now, we're talking about an outside dumpster, which if you look at on the drawing, the dumpster is almost right on the property line of the Newton, New Hampshire, Greeny Park. Um, so while I respect and understand what, what these folks are trying to do for home-based business, for me, 
this is the wrong area to do it in. If he had 15, 20 acres, and he was doing it way out back. Um, you know, and part of my research also was looking at EPA regulations. And the one thing that it does say uh, for these abattoirs is they recommend a buffer zone of 500 meters, which equates to about 1,600 feet between residencies. Um, that's if you have odor control in place. If you don't, it's even further. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's the most thought out plan. Um, I, I don't know whether the neighbors and, and the, the neighborhood was considered when thinking these up. And again, not to take away with what they're trying to do with a home-based business, totally respect that. Um, you know, I just, I have a lot of serious concerns. Um, I wish I had a lot more time to kind of research it a little bit more and, and to hear, you know, the plans and kind of go through them. Um, but being as it, you know, learning about this Thursday night and now we're here Tuesday night, uh, you know, uh, I'm a hard no right now. Um, I, I have a lot of concerns if, if this body approves this permit. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else from the audience? Is there anybody on Zoom that would like to speak? I don't know. I see uh, he, yeah, Anthony. Anthony has his hand up. The floor is yours, Anthony. But you're muted. Or you're unmuted now. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, am, I, am I okay to proceed? Yes. Great. Um, so, generally, I, I, I've, I've heard all the concerns and everything. I, I just want to voice my support for the home-based business as proposed by Mr. Piper. I, I think from what I can tell, he's met all the criteria. He's diligently following the rules and regulations for what he's proposing. <clears throat> um, and it's, it's a service that would benefit the community without detracting from it. Um, and offering, you know, as he as he stated, uh, you know, much needed services to a small number of hunters, farmers, and others in the area that just happen to want to process maybe a chicken or two, um, you know, or, or some other small uh, livestock. Um, it would definitely bring those services closer than where they currently sit, as you know, a hunter and, and harvesting a deer, not having to drive an hour and a half or two hours is definitely something that would be appealing to to me personally even um and i think it's important to emphasize that you know it's a small small family run operation it's not industrial <clears throat> it's not uh you know screaming animals that have been you know things that have been portrayed in some fear mongering on social media lately and there's not really any legitimate risk to public safety or health or concerns about odors or loud animals that, that really hold any substantial grounding. Um, and, and these are these sound like a lot of misconceptions that aren't really grounded in fact or science, but more so in cursory and accurate Google searching. Um, he's made it clear that the business will meet or exceed you know the legal standards outside of what's being proposed to this board which is a home-based business so the the criteria for that appears to have been met the spirit of it appears to have been met and again and not to negate all of the concerns about firearms and everything else being you know discharged and all that for what the community is and neighbors are, are voicing but let's sort of distill that down a bit and you know while it's illegal to discharge a firearm within 300 feet of an occupied dwelling he would be able to use what's commonly referred to as a bolt gun and he mainly put the animal down to begin processing um you know the the assertions from certain residents here they stated they googled it it's that's not fact checking using Google and AI to generate concerns is not really something that should be taken into consideration for a home-based business here. Um, it, it, I guess there's a few other things that stood out to me in, in the concerns, hydraulic noises from, from machinery. Uh, 
the same kind of hydraulic noises that come from our trash pickup from casella and, and waste management. So what's what's the issue and why is that within Mr. Piper's problem all of a sudden? And the same can be said for people speeding. They do. Feel free to call the Newton Police Department and report people for speeding, but that's not within the control of Mr. Piper at all. And it, it shouldn't become his burden to bear, um, at least not in my opinion. Um, horse manure leaking from dumpsters, that's not, that's not his dumpster. Um, I don't know how we can, anybody can sit here and say, because a dumpster leaks, that means every dumpster leaks, then his dumpster is gonna leak and somehow contaminate everything under the sun. Um, at the end of the day, there are 13 pieces of criteria that are before the board, as the, the, the lady at the beginning of the, the meeting said, and that's what's considered, be, should be considered by the, the, the zoning board. Um, if he's outside of that, then that's a different story, but I don't see anything anything popping out um, in, in my view here. I would strongly support the local business being approved. I think the board should approve it. I think Mr. Piper has every reason and every right to use his property in this way. And it's not detracting from the community. It's not not offering any kind of uh, concern that I can see from, the, no one's dog is getting shot. Um, none of that is gonna happen. That's a really difficult uh, bell to unring because it's such a hot topic uh, in general and, and politically, but it doesn't rise to the level where a home-based business would be denied because it's not not fact-based or reality-based to say because he's dispatching a livestock animal to process that somehow from across the street through the trees and over a hill and around a bend that someone's dog is going to get shot. I'm sorry, it just doesn't float. That's pretty much all I have to say is I support it. I think he should get approved. I think the board should consider that. Um, yeah. Just, we need the, Mr. Anthony, we need your name and address, your full name and address, just for the record. Sure, last name is Levin, L-E-V-I-N. Home address is 22 Marku Road. Can you say that a little slower? Yep, Thank last you. name, Levin. Right. Home address, Route 22. Marku Road, right down the road from them. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else online? Uh, there's one person named Susan, but they don't have their hand raised, and nor have they unmuted. Robert, Bob doesn't. Must be dead. Is there anybody else in the audience that? Your backyard is right behind mine. In this winter, I'm assuming this is gonna be a year round business. In the winter, we like go through our, we snowshoe through our yard and stuff. Your yard is right there. My husband said he can see your animals all the time. And um, my heart's racing, sorry. Um, and so gunshots, I'm nervous about gunshot. My husband has guns too. I'm nervous about gunshots everywhere. I have a three year old daughter and a dog. And I'm nervous because regardless of how good of a, sh a shooter you think you are, like for anyone, they can, they can ping, they can go through walls. I mean, it happens. Look it up, it's a fact, it happens. So the fact of the matter is that you, you know, and then the, there's no way animals will not make noise when you go to kill them. So that's gonna be a thing. And look at the summer we just had, having rotting flesh or carcasses in a dumpster is going to smell. <laughs> about like more dangerous animals coming from going from your yard to mine so um it's definitely to me and my family a danger like dangerous concern and an odor concern and a sounds concern 
Um, we have a young child, like I said, and I just think that as um, the gentleman over there pointed out before, that this is something like I respect wanting to have a um, work from home, I work from home, but I can definitely, I don't agree with this being in such a residential area. There's a park right next door. That's obviously also a concern with guns and smells and everything else. The same thing for my own yard. Um, and um, I just I just think this should be in a place that's just not so residential. That's, I just can't, I can't wrap my head around it. <laughs> um, and I've never, and the, what Anthony was just saying that um, you, Jennifer, is your name Jennifer? I can't yep. answer that. Okay, so you brought up the points and he was saying that you brought up those points of what a home-based business requires, but I've never been to one of these, so I don't know how this works, but like the nature and type of the business has to be considered. Is that not considered? Like you guys are just gonna check off those points that you said, that is irrelevant to the type of business that he wants to do. Um, just in short, the, the board can only give permission if they feel that all of the things I listed off have been met. Yeah, so. but that's the issue, is that they probably are met, except that it's the nature and type of business. That has to be considered here. So th the, the details of it certainly are up for consideration. That's why I brought them up. But those are the line-by-line the -line criteria. It's the devil's in the detail is sort of what the board has to discuss. So it's not being dismissed. It is absolutely the criteria. I was just saying that he had supplied the information that stated what he was going to do to meet that criteria. It's the board's discussion whether or not they feel that, yes, he has satisfied that criteria. Okay, but the details of the nature and type of business is considered here? Yes. Not just we check all these boxes yes. off? Okay. And the impact. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Can you ask for her address? Uh, 12 Sarah's Way? Is that right? 12 Sarah's Way. Did you get that, Jim? Right Hold on, this lady wanted to go up. Yes, no? Hi, my name's Kelsey Davidson. I live at 15 Heath Street. I live diagonal to this property. Um, I am a farmer that farms many of the animals that they are talking about processing between pigs, chickens, cows. Um, I come t to this place with actual experience of these places. Um, butchers throughout New Hampshire and Southern and Mid-Maine. Um, I guess I'm up here more to speak into experiencing those places. Um, obviously not all are equal or created the same way as far as home business, but in my actual experience of these, addressing some of the concerns being that um, I found that these butchers take immense care and pride in how they take care of the animals, how they process the animals, and how they clean up the animals with the utmost care of providing an incredible quality of meat and packaging of an animal that family and farmers have taken great care of grazing. So it takes a lot of trust for a farmer to hand that over to a butcher. So we don't take that lightly in who we're handing that over to. So more often than not, we tour the facility beforehand. Um, we get to know that butcher. And I had the honor of getting to know Marissa and Jordan along with their business plan and also touring the facility that they're looking to create this business at. Um, in experiencing multiple of these places, bef I mean, they are of very high work ethic, but also take great care in the cleanliness and the projected plan of what this is to look like. And it goes above and beyond most other small residential butchers that I've seen through Southern New Hampshire, never mind extending past that radius. Um, with that, I. Um, sorry, I'm, I didn't plan on coming up here, so it's not well spoke, but um, in speaking into the processing outside, uh, there is, well, to experiencing their property, you might see the gantry when the gantry is rolled out, but when animals are being processed, the first part is a 
healthy outside air to be able to drain an animal with airflow is, is of the utmost quality of doing that. And then from there, the animal is moved inside to be hung for two weeks, which is quality of meat. I, if you know anything about the process, like anything short of that is, is not gonna, it's gonna give you a gamey meat. So the hope is for that to happen while it's inside in a refrigerated area, locked up and taking care of that, the risk of wild animals coming and smelling this or you smelling it is next to nothing. But also this, this meat is not going rancid, we're curing it in order for it to be more edible. So I think that that just like animals, dead animals hanging for your families to see is, is not what's happening here. So that concern is just is non-existent. That's not what's going on. Um, it's also that area is not directly exposed to the road. Um, I mean, Jordan will speak into his personal plan, but um, I just think that the fear of the unknown here is, is trying to be foreshadowing of what is to come, and that's not the truth here. So if you're able to, like you're airing your concerns of residential butchering, um, I, th I think it would be beneficial if you went in towards some of these places because your concerns aren't factual. That's about all, thank you. Thank you. I have a question for her. I you yes. do. Yes. Sorry with the, yes. so the microphone yeah. um, fluctuating today. Number seven heat. Yeah, I live at. Yeah. And your name, sorry. Uh, yeah, Mike Belanger. Thank live you. At number seven heat street. Uh, I had concerns. She lives at 15. They got a water pond, and they got a stream that backsides the park. Won't all that drainage affect it? Just like the walking trail they established that brings you out to the backside of. Uh, the 55 plus, that's my concern, you know? So I just, it wouldn't affect her where the runoff is, you know, they wash the animals and hang them, that's being done outside or inside, wherever it's getting drained, wouldn't it affect, you know, the stream or the other account, the water that you have on your property? Um. <laughs> questioning your questions for the applicant I will I'm going to summarize that based on other residents concerns of management of waste groundwater runoff containment of processing byproducts if that's the right word you do have someone that online that wanted to speak okay you can delete yeah but yes uh, Roger if you would like to speak on Zoom. Or, oh, he just unmuted. Go ahead. Do we control the mute? Uh, we can. Ask to unmute. Responding. Okay. Um, he disappeared. Okay. Um, yeah. His hand went down. So. Okay. I, I just lowered it. Okay. okay. Um, is there any other additional comments from the public? So you um, we have no, sorry, the, the state, there's no state oversight at this stage of the business, correct? Uh, no, that's not true. There, okay. should, should he be successful in getting an approval, 
you would certainly have a condition of that approval be that he meets all federal, state, and local permitting, which would include things like the meat inspection requirements of the state, the animal welfare and slaughtering rules of the state. Um, so that would still come into play. So the type of disposal, the type of storage, probably. Yeah, I mean, there are rules for certain aspects of that. Yes, there are management of um, waste that has to be followed. That's for any um, sort of waste management. Oh, uh, I think Roger has come back on. Roger, the mic is yours if you intend it to be. Oops. Can you hear me now? I can. How are you, Roger? Here. Hello. 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 Name and address, Roger. as Ms. Wright uh, first stated, that some of the property is going to be done outdoors, and that is not consistent with our home-based business. That's all. Yeah, we're getting, well, we're getting feedback off Jim's mic, I think, because the mics are so sensitive tonight. Can you turn your, you need to mute. I think his main concern was the criteria about outside operations yep. being proposed as part of this. Yep, that's um, my primary concern. Right. Yep. I, I do have a recommendation. I'm let Mr. Piper certainly speak to any of it if you want, um, but I do think that there are a number of questions that could be benefited from some additional information, whether that's tonight or possibly in two weeks. Um. Mr. Hamill is on via his computer and I assume a cell phone. That's why we're getting feedback. So that's why it's getting a repeat. Go on. So I do think a potential next step would be to request additional information. I think we've got a, a good list going of questions. Um, that Mr. Piper could certainly take into consideration. I think it would be good to hear from him if he has other additional information this evening. Okay. Did, go. Another thing might be to actually walk the site and just see what we got there and maybe even see another site that's already set up and working. So you certainly would have the ability to do a site walk. You've taken jurisdiction. Um, scheduling going to another operation unless someone has a exact place that they could do that and the, the woman that lives up the street i don't know if that's and if there's suggestions but that would be a tougher thing to do yeah. but certainly going to mr piper's property to see what does it look like what's the setup proposed um could be a possibility and i have another question uh the gentleman from nine heath street so was he not notified of tonight's hearing or the, the notices went out Actually, 12 days. Okay. Two days earlier than we I got my packet yesterday, so. Yeah. What did you know? It's 319. Uh, yeah. However, I mean, I was two days. No, I'm not saying you. I'm just saying, what it, is it fair to him that he just he didn't get a chance to do his research before he walked in here? You know? So, so the, the, the application has met all legal standards, but if you were to continue the application for two weeks, it would be an extension of the public hearing. There would be the opportunity for um, abutters and anyone else interested to come back and provide additional comment if they so chose. Yep, yep, please. And the next meeting is October 8th, correct? Yes. Thank you. And the clock would be running on? The clock, um, because you took jurisdiction tonight, is 65 days. Thank you. So that's how long you have to make a decision. Do I have to state my name and address again? Probably. 
Meredith O'Connell, 12 Heath Street. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my question was, you said that it met all the criteria? It, um, it met the criteria, but he provided information that addressed all of the criteria. Whether it fully meets the spirit and intent of the ordinance is what the planning board at this point is oh, discussing I and see. debating. Administratively yeah. Because completed. some of it is going to happen outside. So that makes it not meet the criteria. I just wanted to clarify that. Yep. It, it, okay. It's a technically complete application. Like we can say that all the, for lack of better words, all the boxes are checked, like his name is on it, it has an address. I Etc. Sorry. Um, sure. Basically, you think that was just verifying that the uh, Dr. James Summers, 41 He Street. I was just going to ask basically the same exact thing. Is that I believe with the because uh, I know I have in-home business. I believe it has to be indoors, correct? Inside an actual building. So one of the criteria is that the home-based business is occurring inside the premises. Okay. That and can, if it's that, not, that, it still meets be, the criteria. I will say that can be an accessory structure. Meeting the criteria for the planning board to start discussing whether it wanted to approve, conditionally approve, or deny was all I was saying when I said the application was complete and it met the criteria, as in he had supplied the information about the criteria. It is not me giving an approval, it's just me recommending that they have enough information to start discussing the case. They make the actual decisions, that's what we're at. That's what stage we're at at this point. And I do want to add a rebuttal earlier when I was in, when I was up here before. Um, animal blood is considered a biohazard and it needs to be disposed of by, according to Health and Human Services, New Hampshire state law, it has to be incinerated, which you mentioned before. But it can't be kept in a trash can and thrown away like regular garbage. So, thank, thank you. Thank you for yep. the clarification. Davidson, 15 Heath Street. Is there specifications on what inside means as far as like an overhang or how many walls so there needs to be? I can read to you what it is stated in the criteria. So one of them is there shall be no outside operation, storage, or display of material or goods. That is the word for word criteria. Um, it can also be in an accessory structure or in the residential unit. So any structure on the site. Okay, Mr. Mr. Piper, do you have any additional comments, questions, considerations, thoughts? Just addressing some points. Um, there's a little confusion. The blood would be in the holding tank, not in a dumpster. Um, I don't have the exact breakdown time but I can tell you uh, my opinion, I suppose. Blood has a faster breakdown period than your average car wash, chemical, or fertilizer, which I can speak on. It takes two years to break down before um, it's out of the environment. Uh, my business operation hours are limited from seven to four, which means children are in school and people are at work. I understand that the park is open noon or morning dust so I'm just stating that um, the typical smell would be your typical farm smell I am NOT planning on tanning hides uh, as far as regulation assuming that I would be approved my long term goal is to be USDA so if this standard is here USDA is much higher Uh, there was comment about a bone saw. I really don't plan on using one, but if I did, it wouldn't be loud, louder than a skill saw. Eight. Um, there's points of stress. I wanted the community to know that I'm willing to work with them. And um, point nine. There was comment about the design, the plans in general. I needed to submit plans and their requirements of labeling information heavy on those plans. Nothing is necessarily set in stone, so if somebody has a problem with the dumpster, that doesn't mean that's if this was approved at some point, the dumpster would go right there. That's something as a condition that the board can put on. Um, so these aren't the set in stone plans, and if this was to get to approved, that's just how it goes. This is me trying to meet the requirements to be here tonight.
questions from the board? Um, I guess I don't have a, a question as much as I think we need some additional the board and information. I was going to say the same thing that I think we should carry this over to the next meeting. And I think the you summarized some of it right now, but um, the operation outside of a Dan, can you read the exact language so I don't misinterpret our regulations? No outside operations, storage, or display of materials or goods shall take place. Thank you. Um, to try to address, address that criteria, criteria a little bit better. Um, I think that would go a long way as well as waste management. Um, and that, that goes like dealing with byproducts, runoff, drainage, well water, septic. Um, the visibility thing kind of got covered in the point that Andrew just made. Um, and the dispatch of animals was a larger, large concern as well with the use of a firearm. Mr. Chair, may I ask this sure. applicant something? Mr. Piper, can you, I guess I didn't do some of my research, right? I did not realize that this gantry and drain was going to be outside. I thought that that was in the building. So the drain is outside, the gantry is a mobile structure. Think of like a- It's a thing that your the structure. livestock yeah. hangs from, correct? For maybe an hour or two while I break it down into quarters and then it goes back in. It's not a permanent structure. Okay. Thank you. May I also comment if you're oh, considering sorry. a site visit, um, maybe try RJP in Sandown. I don't know if he's home based. I know know what their codes are compared to ours, but I've been there. He uses firearms and he has a very good facility. Um, I do think a site walk uh, on Mr. Piper's property may be useful for the board. I would strongly suggest that with additional information being provided, at least photographic representation, whether if it's of your property, whether they do a site walk or not, or what the gantry looks like, what the drainage looks like, even if it's just representative and not something you already have on site, I think that would be very helpful for um, abutters, for the board, to communicate some of this detail. And on the waste management, um, some additional clarification on the type of unit. I, I absolutely agree with some of the residents on most dumpsters are like a sieve. They're fairly porous, they leak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a drain plug, and usually there's no plug in the drain. There are units available that are sealed units that I personally deal with with work quite often for mm -hmm. handling of like wet material. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's what you're planning to use. I, I think that would be helpful. I don't want anything draining. Okay. Um, Say that again? I didn't hear it. I don't want anything draining. Oh. Um, so, um, and maybe that's a, a submission. I'm just saying if it's a, you know, it may just kind of be an addition to do as well for any plug draining. Um, so, um, some additional clarification or information on that. So he has So if you want, no, he doesn't have to request that. Um, the continuation is strictly for you guys to do. If you do want to do a site walk, you would have to establish a time and date this evening because this would be the continuance of the public hearing. Um, a site walk oh, does allow the, the public to come. It, I will say probably there's very limited parking at Mr. Jordan's property would be my guess. There is a public space about. Oh, the, I'm sorry. That's true. 350 next, feet next to the west. Greeny Park. <laughs> um, Would be Greeny Park. <laughs> so, would you say the date was? Uh, the eighth, if you can hear. So the eighth is the next planning board meeting. Right. So, I am going to make a motion that we carry this over to October eighth. And 
in the midterm if Mr. Piper could set up an appointment that anybody could make to be able to? No, nope, can't do that. It has to be a time and place specific that you say tonight has well, to be able for the public to attend as well. No time? decisions can be Eight made at time. the site walk, though. After work would be great. What, what about what like the eighth is fine. The, uh, that's for the meeting. No, that's for the next we meeting. We have to go prior. What about the first, which would be the Tuesday prior? A week from today. That's fine. Tuesday at what time? 5 p.m. Tuesday at 5 p.m. So you'd need a motion to have a site walk on Tuesday, October 1st at 5 p.m. Exactly, as um, said. The purpose of that site walk would be only to see the property. Questions just for clarification from the board would be fine. Meeting minutes would be kept. No decisions would be made. The public is able to attend. Right. There is no board meeting that night for you. On the, on the first, yes, there is for the select board. That's seven, though? Ours is at six. Okay. We have plenty of time. Okay, so what is it, Tuesday the? the, the Tuesday the first. Thank you. What do you want to do walk at five. No. He has a meeting at six. Is that a I motion, have a meeting Mr. Marshall? I have a from, the, I'm not available, but. Okay, now you, <coughs> now you have two things going at once because you started the, to continue to the eighth and you never finished that one. So my motion is to carry this over to our next meeting, which is October 8th. And Ms. White, I believe, seconded that. I saw her hand go up. Okay, let's take care of that first. All in favor? Aye. 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 Second, I'll second that. Opposed? So that so that was continued to the eighth with Bob making the motion, Barbara seconding it. And now we're talking about a site walk at five o'clock on Tuesday, Tuesday the October first. October first. On September first, yes. October first. October, October first. Sorry, October. We're at the end of September now, Jim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. So we will be there's a site walk on the 1st of October, 5 o'clock. This meeting will be continued to discuss Mr. Piper's proposal on October 8th at 7 p.m. or slightly after. So pull out your phones and put that in there so you don't miss it. You yep. will not be getting another notice. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be sending out an agenda and posting an agenda for that. Yeah, but you won't get another notice in the mail. This is the notice is being at this meeting and the announcement and the meeting minutes. So we can come to the 8th meeting? You, yes. can, you can absolutely come to the meeting on the 8th. Will it be set up like this where we can discuss? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Exactly the same. You guys good? Just a quick question on, um, like, I don't have drainage, I don't have this holding tank, so what are you looking for, a picture of what would be, like, coming from Shea Concrete in Amesbury? Is that what you're looking for? I think a representative picture of what you are envisioning at your property. Okay. I, and that might be easier said than done, but as much information, I think, as you can provide to the board to address some of the concerns and questions brought up. Thank you. Thank you for everybody from coming tonight, and we will see you all again on the 8th. Unless you want to stay for our other board business. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's wicked <laughs> interesting. That's yeah, very exciting. <laughs>
good. I have a question for you after everyone leaves. Okay. So next on the agenda is acceptance of the meeting minutes. Oh, is Barbara <coughs> back? Barbara left. No. She didn't go too far. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you on the eighth. <laughs> okay. Every two weeks, if you want to come, <laughs> we'd love the company. <laughs> Misery loves company. We're waiting on Barbara, though. Would you like me to cover something? Sure. That? Okay. Um, I had asked Jim at the end of last week to forward you a advisory memo that's put out by the Office of Planning and Development and New Hampshire Municipal Association that reviews all of the planning and zoning state law state laws that impact planning and zoning that were passed last year. Um, I'm still kind of going through that to see if there's anything in Newton's regulations that need to be tweaked. I think there might be one or two small things, but I will recommend you peruse that memo. It's about four pages. It's not too bad. It's just good to be aware of what's happening in Concord and how it's impacting your job and mine. Mr. Chair, I will be reviewing like the instructions that we have for abutters creating a butter list because that has now changed. Um, I'll be going through all of our applications to make sure everything is updated in accordance with all of that information. Okay. Thank you. Um, to go back to our regular acceptance of the meeting minutes from August 27th, 2024. Motion to accept. Second. Second. Barbara beat me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Ms. White was louder. Yes, she was louder. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nobody. Uh, next is approval of a NEPA manifest for $1,112.34. Motion to accept. Second. Was that Mr. Eddy? Yep. Aye. Opposed? Um, next is Aquifer Protection Ordinance Amendment. Sorry, Jim, what's up? Oh, now that you've approved that um, NEPA manifest, I will let you know that a certain developer's accounts are now, one is in arrears and one does not have enough left in it to cover any future expenses. So I'd like the board's permission to send them a letter asking them to top up their accounts. I can discuss it with the chair after the meeting. How much are we upside down? Excuse me? Do you know how much we're negative? Um, well, with, I believe it's 408 on this manifest, or, sorry, 480 on this manifest. That puts them in arrears about 160. Okay. And that does not include any recording fees, any, anything that is still outstanding to come in. Did we ever set a, a top limit that we needed them to keep it up at? I mentioned it to their engineer. The last pass through and I've gotten no response since. Okay. Um, we will discuss this, I guess, in non-public at, at some other time. Okay. Um, Okay, next, Jen, is the Aquifer Protection Ordinance Amendment discussion. Yep, um, so I have reached out to DES. Um, you may have meant, 
recalled last time that I had asked if folks were interested in using the new groundwater model ordinance that includes PFAS remediation going forward. Um, Pierce Rigrod from DES uh, was not able to come this evening, but he will be able to come to the October 22nd meeting, so I would like to have an, some time on the agenda to have him uh, present some information with the PFAS um, addition to the groundwater ordinance, which means at the next planning board meeting on the 8th, I would like to do a full walkthrough of what I'm proposing. I'm just gonna give you a quick shot of sort of what I'm referring to. And no, I don't expect you to be able to read that, but all of the red lettering that you're seeing is new additional language. It's not dramatic changes to the proposed or to the existing regulations. It's adding a lot of definitions. It's adding a few procedural aspects. There are a couple of new additions, and that's really the bulk of what we need to discuss to make sure you're on board with that. But most of the requirements aren't dramatically changing because you already had had a relatively recent update to your aquifer protection. So it's mainly cleaning it up. There are a few requirements and they're mainly related to PFAS prevention and also bringing in your existing stormwater regulations, just tying them stronger to your groundwater protection ordinance. So those are really the big changes. Um, the only other large change, and we've talked about this a couple of times, is I have put in the draft language to bring in those wellhead protection areas, those areas around wells um, that have potential risk of contamination, of bringing that into your groundwater protection district. But he's available to come on the 22nd, so if we can plan to have a little bit of time, I think based on applications we should. Um, but on the 8th, I'll probably need about half an hour to 45 minutes to go through some of the aquifer aspects. Sounds good to me. Okay. And next is an update on the Invest New Hampshire housing grant. Yep. Um, you should all have a copy before you. It says proposed outcomes, deliverables, and scope of work. I had last time shared the narrative of the housing opportunity grants, which are due next Monday. Um, this is the full scope of work <coughs> that I'm proposing. It basically is continuing the work that we have been working on for the past 18 months, maybe longer than that, um, which the intent is to, at this point, really take all of the public input that we've gotten, some of the outreach, some of the review of all of your regulations, and actually make regulation changes. Um, so the first task is really continuing the public engagement opportunities. We admittedly did not get a lot of people that came in and sat in meetings to hear a lot of things, but we did get some good feedback via the survey. Um, I do think adding a few more public engagement events that are not possibly at a planning board meeting, but are actually intended to focus on housing. I think that might get people a little more motivated, but we do have to continue the public engagement for the grant process anyway. So that's what task one is really written towards. It's pretty flexible, so we can take advantage of opportunities. We could do a video, we could do some interviews, we could do a survey if we wanted to. There could be a combination of items, but with most of the towns that I'm working on, I'm basically doing a project page so it looks like a mini website where you pull in all of the information, you pull in the master plan work, we can add resources, we can do a video or two if we wanted to. So it kind of follows the flow of what we may propose. Um, going into task two, that is really doing the regulatory adjustments. We do have in here doing up to four minor to moderate regulation changes or one to two major regulation changes. Because some of the housing regulations that are of options and potentially good options for Newton are really subtle in nature, it makes sense to do some of the small ones. They won't take as much effort. They typically are less controversial, but they just do increase housing opportunity based on the needs identified um, in the master plan process. But there might also be some large ones that are going to take more effort, require more regulation change, more engagement. And I've written this so we still have the flexibility, but my number one recommendation for you is adopting a workforce housing ordinance or an inclusionary housing ordinance. And in addition to helping meet the town's needs and goals of housing, it also would bring you into compliance with the state workforce housing law. 
just having that audience. The thing I always stress about this is planning boards do not build anything. They enable opportunity for someone to build it. They might even incentivize someone to build something, but planning boards do not build anything. So that would be part of the discussion of the regulations. Um, going through all of the process, there's nothing in here that obligates the town to adopt those regulations or even to put it forth to public hearing. It does basically want you to have a good faith effort that you will try. It doesn't pass at town meeting, that's fine, there's no negative, you still get all of the grant funds. It's putting in that good faith effort. Um, we did talk about that, um, adjusting the workforce housing yep. and putting that in place so that some developer can't come in and then run roughshod and say that our ordinances are out of, out of date and out of time and be able to take us to court Correct. and then do what he needs to do. It does give the town more control about the housing proposals that could right. potentially be built. I will say that Newton's ability to have large housing is relatively small because of land availability, zoning of residential land, and your general lack of sewer. I mean, you do have water, but even that becomes a little bit constrained because you don't have any municipal water system. So based on all of that, you know, you're not gonna, we're, we're not talking high rises, we're not talking big apartment complexes, we're not even necessarily talking big subdivisions. We're talking about little housing that is right sizing, it can be expanding duplexes, where those are allowed, those are pretty restricted in Newton. Some work on accessory dwellings, some work on um, age restricted or conservation open space subdivisions, which are actually utilized pretty often in Newton for conservation subdivisions. But when you get them, you get actually pretty small applications. So it's not a large number of housing units. So there's a variety of things we can work on to enable housing opportunity. It doesn't mean that we're gonna create hundreds and hundreds of housing units in Newton. Right. Um, the last task is really working on the site plan and subdivision regulations that in some cases are small and independent of any zoning work, but often zoning regulation changes means that you should make adjustments to your site plan and subdivision regulations. So that's just enabling that work to also occur, but zoning amendments you work on pretty much summer, fall, early winter because of town meeting calendar requirements. Site plan and subdivision regulations you can work on any time of year. So that just enables a longer window to work on those. So the ones not connected to zoning, you work on the beginning and end. Zoning ones you work on during zoning season. So with all of that said, the grant fully pays for the work. You do have to hire a consultant. Um, in the last case, it was my office, but you can hire any other qualified consultant, and they can pay for up to 5% of the administrative cost, which is predominantly Jim's time. The time frame, if we apply and I get your go-ahead, is we really wouldn't be able to start until January 1. That's about how long it will take with all the contracting. Uh, and it goes through September 30th, 2026, so it's one town meeting, but it goes well beyond town meeting, so we have a lot of time to be able to do a lot of this work. Um, the estimated cost based on how much zoning I think you guys can handle, how much I can handle in my own office, and just the time lag came out to $33,000, so that means that the administrative cost you could um, also ask for is $1,650, so the grant request would be $34,650,000. And if you are okay with that scope of work and that proposal, I can submit the application for you if you vote for it. I will need at least draft meeting minutes from Jim. I will need the ability for Dennis to sign the application and possibly or also a letter of support. Either the chair or the vice well, chair. Yeah, it just has to be one of the elected. Just officials. to be on the safe side. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently Andrew's been more responsive than me. He just corners me at meetings. Or elections. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Marshall, are you willing to move to submit the grant application? And authorize the chair and vice chair to sign the application. Aye. <laughs> yes. Second. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And we're adjourned at 8.39 or 41. I uh, can I actually just recommend one thing? Yes. We had under other business um, 125 Development Corp on the agenda. Is that's not on the agenda that's in front. It's under board business. Did I miss it? Yeah, it's, not, it's so item E. It's not on the, the agenda that you <laughs> got in the mail because okay. it came, you sent me yeah. the request after. After, okay. It is um, on the, I was, so it's on the publicly posted agenda, yes. They so did send an email at 520 asking for a continuance. Uh, they requested to be, to be continued. I will say, there was no application filed. There was no specific request. They did submit some updated plan sets, but there was no specific action requesting what they had changed, what they were trying to accomplish. I did reach out to um, Barry Geyer, their engineer, just requesting a summary of what was being asked for and what had changed based on the revised plan sets I received. Um, did not hear any, other than I know that he received the um, information, I didn't hear any further communication from him. So you don't need to continue an application, but they're effectively requesting to be on the next application. I would recommend okay. honoring that, but it is not a public hearing, it is not a continuation of an application. Okay. So I don't think you need to take any action. I think that I would just recommend they simply be placed on the next agenda as an item. As not, as a, not as an application, just as an item. Okay. Um, Is that the eighth Yes. So what are you, you were looking for a motion to grant there? I don't think you need a motion. Th there's nothing to make a motion about. Every, the I think just consensus that they should be placed on the next agenda per it, their request. Yeah, they, they supplied paperwork. The plan sets were revised twice after the Planning Board approved them. Right. There's some other paperwork, such as DES permits and what have you, that may or may not be in accordance with the original plan, but refer to the last iteration of the plan that was changed after the planning. So, so oh, no, I get so all I, that. I wouldn't get into the exact yeah. nature yep. and scope. I just Right. We'll wait for the applicant to yeah, provide yeah. or opine on it. We've requested so, them to provide more information about and clarity about what they are seeking. Exactly. So I figured I would speak to the chair at the end of the meeting going, how do you want this worded? Um, I would just put them as board business one, 125 Development Corporation. Yeah. And Jen did follow up with the applicant and their representative. So uh, out of courtesy, I, either Jen or I will follow back up basically respond to the email for okay, clarification. That's, that's all. And okay. We'll, and we'll leave it at that. So I rescind my previous adjournment. Is that a word? And now we're going to 844. 844. <laughs>